What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you these five amazing hacks in Revit that are going to save you so much time. So I'm always looking for some quick tips and time-saving tricks in Revit that uh, just allow you to work on your projects faster and, and it doesn't slow you down or maybe some uh, some elements of the process where you can kind of skip uh, some parts or any repetitive process that you can skip i i love that so these are the the five latest tips that i really loved using in revit so i decided to share with you guys but before i get into that i would just like to ask you to like this tutorial it helps me out a lot with the youtube algorithm and also if you haven't already i suggest you subscribe because i make uh, multiple useful revit tutorials each week also each week i make one one advanced Balkan architect course. These courses are all over one hour long each. I have like 33 courses out so far and they are all available on my Patreon. Uh, first link in the description. So if you are interested in something like that, I suggest you check it out. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the, uh, into the tips or hacks. So let me switch here to my computer screen and uh, the first tip is the match properties option. So let's say you're working in Revit and let's place a wall here. So I'm just going to go with a, uh, let's go with a specific wall. So for example, I'm going to go with, uh, uh, I don't know, let's go with a brick on metal stud and uh, let's place one wall segment here. So if I, uh, let's go maybe into realistic, there we go. So we have this wall. As you can see, it's made out of brick. Now I'm going to change it just a little bit. So maybe for unconnected height, let's change it down to 5,000 millimeters. So as you can see, it's smaller. Here we have the room bounding option. So let's change that. And yeah, let's let's say we're happy with these changes. Now all of these changes, as you can see, are now here inside of this properties panel. So if I go ahead and create a new wall, so let's uh, maybe go with the, I don't know, generic 200 millimeter wall and let's place it here, just like that. So as you can see, this wall has the default properties. So it's this wall and it goes from level one, it's unconnected, 8,000 uh, 8, millimeters, and it's room bounding. Now, if I want to kind of create, make sure that this wall has the same properties as this existing wall, I can use the match properties option. So to, to get that, go here to the modify tab and here you have your match properties, match type properties. Uh, the shortcut is MA, as you can see over here. So you basically just select that and you select first the wall that you want to kind of choose as uh, like the object to copy its type. So it, it says over here, select an object to copy its type. So I'm just going to select this object and now you have to select the, and now it says select the, the object to change its type and that's this object over here. So once I select it, as you can see now, it has the same height, it, it's the same type and uh, all of that. So that's how we change uh, type properties or how we match uh, type properties properties of two separate uh, two separate walls. Okay, let's now talk about curtain uh, curtain walls. So I'm just going to select one of these walls and I'm going to change it to a curtain wall. Let's go with the storefront. There we go. And let me just delete this one. Okay, so we have this uh, curtain wall over here. I'm just going to extend it maybe a little bit, make it a bit larger. There we go. So uh, if you're working with curtain walls, sometimes you are going to be in a situation where you want to change certain curtain panels. So let's say these panels over here, the, the ones in the middle, the row in the middle, I want them to change them and I want them to be solid. I don't want them to be uh, transparent. So to do that, what you need to do is you need to hit the tab key uh, once then uh, unpin it and then you have to go ahead and change it from glazed to solid and there you go. Now to do this for each individual panel, to select each individual panel, it would take a lot of time. So what I like to do in that case, let's go back a few times, is you just go to one of the panels, select it and then you right click. Now you have this select panels option and you can select uh, along the vertical grid, along the uh, horizontal grid and panels on host. So I'm going to go along the horizontal grid and as you can see it selects all of the panels so I can just unpin all of those just like that and then I can maybe change them to solid. And there we go, that's how you do it. 
So that's just a quick tip how can you select multiple panels at once. Now in this case there wasn't so many but if you're working on a large building you can't have a lot of panels uh, that you want to uh, perhaps change. Okay, moving on, let's see what's the next steps. Okay, so the next step is select previous. So when you're working in Revit, you're also you're always working in multiple views. We have a lot of views. And let's say you want to select some element, but you're not sure how to select it in the uh, in the 3D and it's or maybe it's difficult to select in 3D something like that. So you want to go to a view in which it's uh, easily visible and easily selectable. So I can go like this into level 1 and then perhaps I want to select this here Malian. Now if I switch to 3D view it's still selected but sometimes when you switch to a different view it's going to get deselected along the way. So in order to select it again what you can always do is right click and then you have the select previous option. So you just select previous and there you go. So it basically highlights the previous selection. So if you just want to select the previous thing that you have been working on just right click select previous and there you go. So that's another cool uh, tip or hack that I like to use in Revit. Moving on, the next one is the uh, repeating detail. So that's uh, that's a cool one. So whenever you're working in in Revit, sometimes you want to uh, add details to your uh, model. So let's go here into one of the views, like one of the uh, flat views, like level one, the plan view. <clears throat> And here, let's say we want to add some detail components. So to add detail components, what you need to do is you need to go here to the Annotate tab and then you have to choose your detail component. So here we have detail component. Now in this case, not many are selected. So let's go maybe with uh, row lock or rimming section. These are, I think these are bricks. Okay, yeah. Uh, so maybe, maybe the uh, row lock uh, brick. And as you can see here, we have a brick. Now, now if I just place one brick like this it's okay but let's say usually bricks come in rows so you would have to copy it around many times so if you're maybe doing some sort of a, uh, a wall you would have to go here to copy and then select multiple and then you, you would have to copy it multiple times and it really takes uh, takes uh, takes a lot of time to do this so what you can alternatively do is go here to component open up the drop menu and here you have the repeating detail components so basically you can make multiple components so you just go here and you create that brick and there you go as you can see it's creating multiple bricks now you can select it go into edit type you can change the detail so you can change it from this brick to this brick hit apply okay and as you can see it changed also the distances the, between the bricks uh, for these ones it's already calculated but when you load something in you can always go here into edit type and then change the spacing from maybe 75 millimeters to 100 millimeters hit apply okay and as you can see now the distance between these bricks is larger so it basically works like some sort of an array but it's not an array it's a tool of its own so it's uh, super simple to use so I, I, I really like using this and the final tip is in my opinion the coolest one and that's creating custom thumbnails for your Revit projects so uh, if I want to save this project I, I usually like to have a specific thumbnail. I don't like like to have like a thumbnail that includes like a plan view or something like that. So you, I either like to go with a 3D view or something better. You can actually customize a thumbnail like you do here for my YouTube uh, videos. I can customize my Revit project thumbnail. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an an image for this. So I'm going to go here to a legend and create a new legend view. Once this view is created I'm going to go to my insert tab, go into image and let's load in an image. So here on my desktop I have an image of my logo so what I'm going to do is just open that logo up and just place it like this. So there you go this is my Balkan Architect logo, this is what I use. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't, I don't know, I've created this a, a while back so I'm just stuck with it, I'm using it. So th this is my logo. And let's uh, let's create a, or let's save this project and leave this logo as a thumbnail. So what you need to do is go here to file and of course save as a project. And here you have some options. So when you go to save the project, you can save it. Let's call it uh, Balkan Architect Tips or Hacks. There we go. And uh, let's say we want to add this specific 
uh, image as our thumbnail. What you need to do is go here to options and here you have an option to uh, for a thumbnail preview and you can go ahead here and choose for from any of the views. So you can either go with a 3D view, maybe with a floor plan view or in this case I'm just going to go with the active view and that will basically uh, use the one that's currently active in this case that's the uh, that's my logo so if I could just go here to OK and then save this project and let me just minimize Revit here and as you can see here is the project that's the Revit project there is the little Revit logo in the corner and it says Balkan Architect Revit Hacks and there is my logo so that's how you do something like this that's how you customize your uh, Revit uh, your Revit thumbnail Okay, so those are my uh, tips and tricks uh, that will save you some time in Revit or make your Revit projects looks, look cool like this one with a customized uh, thumbnail. So that covers this video. Again, as I said, if you're uh, looking for uh, any of my project files, I have over 300 Revit project files so far. Or if you want to explore some of those advanced courses, check out my Patreon first link in the description. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for any future Revit tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below this video. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye.